Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery and uh, it was a week ago that I last fed my African nightcrawler bins, or at least the uh, the bins that I refer to as African nightcrawlers. And at that time we saw a whole lot of mites and I kept thinking to myself how great it would be if I can get a really good close-up look at these things. So I, uh, I decided I would break out my macro filter and um, attach it to my DSLR Nikon camera here to get a really close-up view of um, of these mites that are crawling around in the bin. So you can see I can get up really, really close to this um, subject matter now with this and, uh, and get a really good view of what these things look like. So I thought I would set the camera to time-lapse mode and maybe take a, a frame every few seconds. And then, then we would also be able to maybe not only see them moving, but we'd also be able to see a little bit of detail too. Because we only see little white specks when we normally shoot with my GoPro camera. But I think with this close-up setup, we might be able to see a little bit better what it is that's cruising around inside my bins. So let's give this a try. So as you can see, I've got the camera set up over here, peering down into this section of the bin. So let's see if we can open things up a tad here. And get a close-up look at a few things. Hmm. I'm wondering if we might want to get a close-up view of one of these uh, one of these little worms. Yeah, let's try to put this little guy right in front of the camera and see what we get. Notice that the camera is pretty much zeroed in on where that letter M is. So I thought I would just peel that back so that we can kind of re, um, reacquire that location. Or if we pull it back, I guess it's right where that piece of cardboard right there is. Maybe if I can just sort of make that a little bit more prominent. So if we could find some, uh, some mite activity, maybe we could just pour, put a bunch of that right there. And then um, hopefully get a better view of it. So let's see if we can um, see what we can come up with. Let's see, like right here, for example, there's a piece of food that's got a whole bunch of mites on it. So I'm going to shoot some time lapse of that, some really high resolution close up photos. Let's see how that turns out. We'll give that a minute or two to finish. All right, well, the Nikon just finished shooting, uh, I guess, 300 or so images that we'll stitch together into a time-lapse video and play, play that back, you know, a couple within a couple seconds to see what a couple minutes worth of movement there on that piece of food is. That really seems to be attracting the, um, the mites. I guess it's been, what, a week now? It's been seven days since this bin was last fed. And, you know, I guess I could have probably come in here prepared to feed this bin, but I had a feeling that there'd probably be some pretty good amounts of leftovers in here, which there are. As you can see, there's bits and pieces of the previous feeding here. Certain things are definitely attracting mites, whatever some of these particular food items are. My thought here was to see if I can do something to sort of um, deter the mites from being so content in this bin. Um, and I believe that one of the main things you could do is basically withhold food or um, take away their food um, and dry things off. Help the bin dry off a little bit and that might result in fewer mites. Um, so, you know, I, I could probably just scoop a lot of this food right out of here. All these leftover bits of veggies and fruits and whatnot. But then where would I put this stuff, you know? I've only got 
two African Nightcrawler bins, so I wouldn't want to put this stuff into a different bin. You know, not to mention the fact that it is covered in mites, too, so I wouldn't want to kind of, um, you know, spread the mite situation from bin to bin that way, either. Just wondering, do I want to really remove this food or just let the worms keep working it and eventually it'll just vanish? But maybe the other thing I could do is, uh, maybe just leave the bin uncovered and let it air out a little bit. Because here too I see some serious mite coverage on these pieces of food over here. Let me see if I could shoot another little brief segment of time-lapse video of this material here that seems to be pretty heavily um, mobbed with mites. Well, let's see if we can get another little segment over there. All right, well, the camera just shot another segment of this other piece of infested um, food over here <laughs> covered in mites and you know, some people say, you know, don't worry about the mites, they're just a contributor to the breakdown process. Um, I, I don't even know, because I don't even know what type of mites these are. So I'm going to try to remain optimistic. I'm going to try to remain optimistic from the point of view of um, assuming that the, the mites are not going to cause the worms any harm. But, I'd also like to start taking active measures in reducing their numbers. So, you know, one, one step could be to just remove this food. And the worms should be okay, just, you know, rummaging through the remainder of what's in the bin. And then, maybe allowing the bin to dry off a little bit. Um, might reduce the number of mites in here, I'm not sure. So I'm thinking one, one step at a time. That's kind of my typical uh, approach to trying to troubleshoot is to apply one sort of change and to see if that particular change does have the type of reaction or outcome that I, um, I was hoping for. And instead of like making numerous adjustments, maybe just, uh, just do one thing here and that would be not to feed, but I think to try to initiate the drying of this bin a little bit. And I think that could be done as um, easily as um, not replacing this cardboard cupboard that's got the plastic on it. So I think that's what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of scrape some of these um, castings back into the container. And this plastic will remain off giving the bin a little bit of time to air off, air out a little bit, dry off a little bit. And um, maybe all we'll do is we'll cover up with this piece of newspaper that's in here already. That should allow for the bin to dry out a little bit, at least on the top surface. I think the bin's old enough at this point that the material that's down lower should remain damp enough and comfortable enough to suit the worms. Maybe the material out on the surface will start to dry. So maybe we'll also try to position all of this food scrap near the top instead of burying it so much like we usually do. Maybe that'll keep the, um, the mite activity up near the surface and let the worms kind of um, have the lower area. And then maybe the food items will start to dry out a little bit too over time, possibly reducing the number of mites in here. So, whatever, I guess some sort of a next step that drive toward, drives towards um, the reduction of mites is any good step. Because right now there's really nothing going on here other than me just feeding on a regular basis and observing that there's tons of mites in here. But I do want to do away with these mites at this point. I'm getting a little tired of seeing them. <laughs> so, that's going to be our plan for this one. We'll cover up again, but with paper only. Hopefully allowing the bin to air out and get a little bit more dry. I can't remember, is this one sheet of paper or two? Even if it's two, I'm wondering if it might be impossible to open it up. 
I'm seeing a bunch of springtails on here too. I'm wondering if we could do a similar little time lapse of the um, springtails too. They're somewhat faster movers, but I can certainly see a bunch of them here on the paper. Let's see if we can capture a little bit of that too before we wrap up here. Maybe we get a closer look at what these little guys are. Let's give that a try. camera's done shooting and it's trying to show a little preview video of how it turned out so I guess it'll just be easier to see when I get it up onto the computer so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover up here but with paper only like I said earlier and we'll do the same on the vermi bag tote that's got the other batch of African night crawlers in it if they're in fact African night crawlers And I'm sure within a few days, things are going to start becoming quite a bit dry in here without the plastic covering. So let me get this camera out of the way. And then I can return this container up to the shelf. So now the other system that we've been Observing the same sort of issue in is this uh, vermi bag tote Also inhabited with similar worms African night crawlers supposedly And I'm thinking we'll do the same thing here. We'll simply remove this piece of plastic covering Maybe I'll come back here in a little while and try to shake off some of these castings after they've had a chance to dry And then what we could do is we could just leave um leave this bin with paper coverings only as well here too i could see little white specks all stuff that i'm assuming are mites here maybe we won't bother with trying to bring the um the leftover foods up to this top surface maybe we'll just leave things be the way they are and um and just remove the plastic, allowing for a little bit more evaporation to occur here, allow the material in the bin to dry off a little bit. And we'll see if that helps with the numbers of mites. Hopefully reducing them. <laughs> At least that's what I hope. So, all right, I'm gonna put this thing away and I got a couple other things to pack up and clean up, but, uh, but I'm not gonna keep you around for that because that's boring. Before I go though, let me just really quickly say thank you. Thanks so much for sticking around. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. If you haven't done so already, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.